the Earth's climate system. The climate system keeps Earth's global temperatures constant by, first of all, absorbing energy from the sun, and then the Earth traps, stores, transports this energy from one place to another. For instance, the equator gets much more heat and that slowly moves towards the poles or else we would freeze up here in Canada. And then eventually all that heat is radiated back into outer space. So climate system has four main components. The first is called the atmosphere, then the hydrosphere, the lithosphere, and all living things. So living things actually affect the climate as well. So let's look at the atmosphere. So the atmosphere is made up of layers of gases surrounding the earth. And there's a picture in your textbook on page 331. It's this one on the side, and I want you to actually copy it down. It's hard to see here on the printout. So if we start at the very bottom, so if we go anywhere between six to 20 kilometers, you know, above the surface of the earth, and here's a picture of where 20 kilometers is, the top of Mount Everest, just to give you an idea, that's called the troposphere. So that's the one closest to the surface of the earth. The next layer goes all the way up to 50 kilometers and that's the stratosphere. So we have weather stations up here, planes fly here. The next one, bring this down a little bit, is something called the mesosphere. So the mesosphere is where we see meteors. You know, when you see that, those falling stars streaking, streaking through the sky. And that goes all the way up to uh, 85 kilometers. Now it gets interesting. We're into the range of the International Space Station, shuttles, and this is called thermosphere. And that goes all the way up to 690 kilometers. And then finally, the last smallest, thinnest layer is something called the exosphere. And that goes all the way up to 10,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface. So what I would like you to do is to draw this and write in these names. The next uh, component we're going to look at is something called the hydrosphere. So the hydrosphere, we're talking about all the water in the earth. So the hydrosphere includes liquid water in lakes and oceans, water vapor in the atmosphere, and ice and glaciers and at the poles. So it doesn't matter what form the, the water is in, if it's a vapor, if it's liquid, if it's gas, that's the hydrosphere. And what we have here is a picture. This is also a picture out of your textbook, which I would like you to copy down. It's on page 333, and it shows the water cycles. What happens in the water cycle is that we have transpiration, which is plants actually give off water. Um, if you have a house plant, sometimes you see little drips of water underneath them. It does happen. So all plants, so grass, trees, flowers, okay, they actually release water into the atmosphere and we have evaporation from the sun. So that water goes up, forms clouds. Eventually, that water comes back down as precipitation. Some of it goes into groundwater, which is helpful for people like me who are on well water. Um, others just run off into lakes, rivers, oceans, and it starts over again, okay? We evaporate, and we have condensation, we've got big cloud, that eventually turns into um, rain, comes down, and it repeats, repeats, repeats. So that's the hydrosphere. So atmosphere, we're talking about gas around the Earth. Hydrosphere is all the water on Earth. The next one is the lithosphere. So the lithosphere is uh, Earth's rock crust, including land surfaces. So the lithosphere is all the land, okay? It's all the rock uh, that we have. And that definitely affects climate. And we talked about this in class. So I got this neat little diagram here where what we have happening is coming from the left of this picture, we have air, it picks up uh, ocean water, for instance. So we have nice moist air, it's warm. And as it goes up this mountainside, well, what happens is the higher we go, the colder the temperature gets. And when the temperature gets too cold, the air releases that moisture in the form of rain and snow. So as the air goes up here, it had lots of moisture, but it gets too cold, it starts to snow, and we end up with one side of the mountain being very, very lush, lots of vegetation, lots of moisture. However, the wind doesn't just stop there. What it does is it keeps going to the other side, but by the time it gets to the other side, it's dry and it doesn't have any moisture, and you end up 
with very, very dry on the other side. So that's one way that land formations affect climate. The last one we're going to look at are living things. So living things means everything that was alive. So it's all living things on Earth are part of the climate system. And we'll give you some examples how. So plants and animals change relative amounts of gases in the atmosphere. So through photosynthesis, for instance, plants take in carbon dioxide, gas, and release oxygen gas. So that's one way plants, you know, change gases around the earth. Another is through cellular respiration. So this is what we do. This is what most animals do. So we take in oxygen and we release carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. Now, cows, sheep actually produce a tremendous amount of this CH4. That's methane gas. Okay, so that's a gas that they just expel from their bodies after eating. We do it too, but cows and sheep actually do it to a significantly higher proportion uh, as they digest food. And that actually affects the climate as well. It is that significant. Termites and some bacteria also produce methane gas. Uh, some gases in the atmosphere, for instance, the carbon dioxide and the methane, absorb lower energy radiation emitted by the earth. Okay? And it, it just holds it in like a blanket. So what I would like you to do is questions 1 to 6 on page 335.